what does this tree, that plant, that tree, kind of, and this banana right there have in common? Exactly, you guessed it, they're all part of the nitrogen cycle. Okay, think about the nitrogen cycle, like the carbon cycle. We all need it, it flows around through our environment, but we can't obtain it from the air, which really sucks for us, but it really sucks more for the plants that need it to grow. Okay, they can't obtain it from the air, they have to obtain it from the soil. First things first, there are these bacteria in our soil that perform nitrogen fixation on them so they can make them into other forms of nitrogen that the plants can absorb through their roots. So, yeah, we need the nitrogen cycle because most of our air, as you can see here by this delicately crafted graph, is mostly nitrogen. The air that's in this bottle is mostly comprised of nitrogen which is what bacteria and certain other organisms need in order to perform nitrogen fixation for the plants. Okay, you have your seed here, and you're going to plant it now. Okay, you're going to have to try your best to pretend this is a real seed, but and also going really fast. Those rubber bands represent the soil, and they're getting a lot of nutrients from it. Now, depending on what type of plant you are growing, you might want to use one of these three nutrients over the other. NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Each one does their own separate thing for the plant. Nitrogen. Nitrogen is largely responsible for the growth of the leaves on the plant. Phosphorus. Phosphorus is largely responsible for the root growth and flower and fruit development of the plant. Potassium. Potassium is a nutrient that helps the overall functions of the plant to perform correctly. Plants and humans need nitrogen fixation and the nitrogen cycle for a very good reason. It comprises our DNA in the form of nitrogen bases. So, the nitrogen bases. They all look the same to me, so I'm just going to use this cat eraser to represent them. Let's start with the first one. Cytosine, uracil, thiamine, guanine, and adonine. Well, why talk about the nitrogen cycle and nitrogen in general? Well because of a pretty important plant. You guys want to take a what plant that is? It's corn. Why corn? Well, that's because it has a very, very good use for the best animals on earth. I'm talking about humans, of course. They are the best animals on earth. They also have a bunch of other uses, but first things first, the biodiesel. Now, diesel. It powers our stuff that we need, our tractors, our trains, some other stuff. The best part about biodiesel is the fact that we can use existing oils that we have to create it. And this is where biodiesel comes in. Want to know why? Because you can use other oils or any kind of oils from plants or animals to create biodiesel. Nitrogen was discovered by a Scottish physician. Daniel Rutherford in 1772. You are probably wondering how we obtain nitrogen to make fertilizers, to use, all that good stuff. Well, we use a process called fractional distillation. Fractional distillation is the separation of a mixture into its component parts. Chemical compounds are separated by heating them to a temperature at which one or more mixtures will vaporize. This is how we get nitrogen gas. Nitrogen gas. That is how you capture it. So you can make liquid nitrogen or other things that we use. From fertilizers so we can grow plants. From the electronics industry in order to be used to flush out the oxygen so they can make electronics without having them to oxidize. 